रिकॉर्डिंग इन अलहमदिल्ला नहमद नस्ताइन नस्तफ़िर व नशद वहद शरीक व नशद महमद रसूल अम्माबाद फ़ाउदिल्लिनशीम बसमीम ियमी <laughs> These two surahs of the Quran, Surah Al-Talaq and Surah Al-Tahrim, they talk about two sides of a marriage. In Surah Al-Talaq, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala begins by saying, "Ya ayuhan nabiy, O prophet, idha talaqtum an-nisa, when you have given divorce to your women, fa talliquhunna bi'iddatihim li'iddatihim." then give them their their talaq for their their time period and count it what taqullaha rabbakum so fear your allah who is your lord wa la tukhrijuhunna min buyutihinna do not kick them out of their houses wa la tukhrijna illa an ya'tina bi fahishatan mubayyana and do not kick them out of the house except they have done some indecency wa tilka hudud Allah this is the laws of Allah the limits of Allah wa may yata'adda hudud Allah fa qad zalama nafsa and whoever crosses the limits of Allah he has done wrong to himself so this surah it starts with giving talaq to his wives but like this place and many other places where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is being mentioned the actual audience is also the rest of the muslim community So the tahrim begins with the opposite side. One is you're going to divorce your wife. The other is ya ayuhan nabi o prophet of Allah lima tuharrimu ma ahalla Allah lak. O prophet of Allah why do you make haram upon yourself something that Allah has made halal? This was the incident of the honey you also the incident that took place. What is interesting about this ayah is that the prophet never made it haram. The Prophet did not make honey haram, but it's being mentioned here. Lima to harimu because the Sahaba, the companions, and maybe we would have looked at this incident that the Prophet stopped taking honey as it's haram upon us. So because of this, there was the implication of it being haram, not that the Prophet made it haram. So ya yuhan nabi lima to harimu ma ahal Allahu lak. Why do you make haram which Allah has made halal for you? Why? Tabtaghi maradata azwajika, seeking the pleasure of your wives. Wallahu ghafurur rahim, and Allah is most uh, forgiving and most merciful. So, in the first surah, surah al-Talaq, you find that Allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about the Prophet giving talaq to his wives, which never happened. And uh, in this surah, you find Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala talking about doing things for the pleasure of the wives. Now, this is very important because generally there are two extremes that take place in marriage. One extreme that takes place in marriage is where because. the two are in conflict the husband and wife they're in conflict and that conflict becomes manifest in arguments and so on and so forth the other is that they they're not in harmony but especially the husband because he knows if he argues with his wife the the disagreement with the wife will lead to conflict so he doesn't want conflict so what does he do so he be, he submits to his wife This is called being a pleaser in general in society you're a pleaser you don't want conflict and the other is you are a wife pleaser so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah he's saying to the prophet when it comes to issues of halal and haram 
Okay, don't be a wife pleaser. This is actually a psychological disease, so to say, that some people they don't want to take any risks with their wives, and this hurts the marriage. Even though the person is thinking that I'm not causing, I'm helping not to cause conflict, because I'm giving in to my wife and her demands, right? But in fact, the wife inherently, women, they inherently want somebody who takes a stand. That's what it means. Rijal means what? The Arabic word Rijal comes from the word Rijal, which means what? Huh? Rijal means the one who is on his feet. On his feet, on his legs. And this is, you know, you can see this, especially if you ever want to study human nature. One of the great things to study human nature is to study stories. Because real human nature comes out in stories. And all the stories, the, the, the uh, you know, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about Saba and Suleiman. When Saba entered the, the palace, not palace, but the, the sanctuary of, because his palace was a masjid basically, where is Aqsa today. And when Saba entered, what she, she said, Aslam tu ma'a Suleiman. I surrender with Suleiman. Aslam tu ma'a Suleiman. Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. I surrender. So this same story is expressed in Bollywood movies through Cinderella and all of this. What is it that the, uh, the, the women want uh, a husband they can trust, they can rely on, a man who's on his own feet, so on and so forth, okay? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this surah, in this ayah, Ya ayyuhun nabi, O men, O Prophet of Allah, لِمَا تُحَرِّمُ مَا أَحَلَّ اللَّهُ لَكْ Now, there are men, we, uh, in psychology, some, some people like to talk about this, even though uh, it's not really professional terminologies, but we have this concept of the alpha male. The very confident man who has very strong opinions. And what statistics show that women respect men much more when they are very confident of their opinions. Okay? And so, uh, so one is there's a conflict and it's becoming manifest, er, er, manifest uh, into a war zone, which we talked about, which is talked about in the ending of this ayah, right? Uh, that, oh, oh, uh, ya yuhal ladhina amanu, oh, you people who believe, what? Inna min amwalikum wa awla, azwajikum wa awladikum, adubun lakum, right? In, indeed, in your uh, wives and your children are your enemies, fahzuruhum, be careful of them, right? So this is that. Now, there was a point about this you wanted me to mention last time, right? Uh, about this ayah. But anyway, uh, so the other side of that, one is that you make it into you make it into a war zone, but you don't want to make it into a war zone. The other is that it becomes a war zone because that's how your personality manifests it. The other is that you give in to the, the happiness of your wives, right? So you have a conflict with someone, either you can show it as a conflict or you can sh pacify the conflict by giving in. Both of these situations are unhealthy in terms of relationships. Both of these situations are unhealthy because what happens, and uh, you know, I'm gonna read to you an article and this is basically what today's lesson is about. It's, uh, the article is called Stop Living for the Approval of Women, uh, written by uh, some counselors and stuff. So sometimes men, what they do is they'll, they don't, Want, they want to express their manliness, so they do it by uh, by showing dominance, which is a need women have, but sometimes it can become aggressive, and it becomes a negative thing. On the other side is the other negative aspect, whereas you give in to the happiness of your wives at the expense of what you hold the principles to be true. And this can also be true on the other side, on the side of the wife to the husband, and the husband to the Wife. Oh, the point that you mentioned was uh, in that ayah previously that we studied in the ayah. I will just go to it very quickly. Uh, uh, in Surah uh, the ending of Surah Al-Ghab, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu inna min azwajikum wa awladikum Indeed, uh, all you people believe indeed in your, in your spouses is the point that you raised. 
meaning it could be for the husband or the wife because of the word azwaj used. Okay, even though generally in Quranic terminology would be referring to the male, but uh, in terms of the linguistics, it can go both ways. So, يَا يَهْلَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ وَأَوْلَادِكُمْ أَذُبُ لَكُمْ فَحْذَرُوهُمْ وَإِنْ تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَهُ وَتَغْفِرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ فُرُحِيمٌ So this is one, one end, where, or one end is where you become aggressive. Okay? The other end is you give in to the happiness of your wife. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't do that. Because if you do that, uh, first of all, Allah is saying don't do that. But on the other side, if you become a husband who is always giving in to his wife, and uh, you know, th this is the thing is that this is such a sensitive issue because no man will ever say yes, I give in to everything my wife says. Okay, no man would be willing to say to that, say, agree to that. So, uh, so this article actually starts by asking this question. Um, I'm reading only parts of it now. How many men will admit to needing the approval of women? Okay, how, how many have you met? How many? How have you met? How you met, uh, as men get older, they've suffered long enough, they'll start to admit it. So he's saying as men get older, they'll start to admit it and work toward change. But what about your friends and blah, blah, blah. So I'm just, but the point is, it's hard to admit, you, but this is the only way sometimes people learn to remove conflict, which is to just give in. And this is something that we need to be careful about because uh, when we're talking about living an Islamic lifestyle and we're talking about living the Islamic way, then men have to play a very pivotal, pivotal role in that, in the sense that the wife has to give the male his place by, uh, or he has to kind of act it so that he has it. Now, the importance of that I will talk to you in a second. Hold on one second. <coughs> So, let me go back over here. So, Ya Yuhan Nabi, now what happened in this case? Uh, as I was saying before, Ya Yuhan Nabi, O Prophet of Allah, Lima tuharrimu. Allah is saying, why did you make haram? And as you know, the Prophet didn't make haram, but it could have been taken as haram. Lima tuharrimu ma ahallallahu lak. What Allah has made halal for you. So what the male is being taught in this ayah is that, you can give in to your wife to make her happy, but at what point you must stop is where it is, it is conflicting with the uh, conflicting with the rules and regulations of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And at that time, either the husband or the wife, whoever is the one who is upholding the deen, you have an authority with you, which is Allah and the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet that you can use to uh, to have that courage to stand on your feet. Anyway, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِي لِمَا تُحَرِّمُ مَا أَحَلَّ اللَّهِ لَكْ تَبْتَغِي مَرْضَاتِ أَزْوَاجِكْ Now, see, men, they grow up needing the approval of women, all of men, because we, have the, we need the approval of our parents, we need the approval of our mother, and so on and so forth, and we definitely need the approval of the women in our lives, you can say, if you put it in that way. Uh, it's important that they they approve of us in a way. But that can be taken advantage of to the point where a person feels his manlyhood has been castrated from him. He's been emasculated or that he feels that, you know, that, uh, that uh, he, he feels emasculated. Emasculated means his manliness has been taken away from him. And sometimes uh, women tend to do that. Uh, so I just want to go back to this le uh, letter. First, let's define approval as it relates to our relationships with women. Approval is her permission for you to take an action. Approval is her acknowledgement that she won't take you to task for your choice. So it is when you have given in to the point where you can't make personal choices without consulting her. Now I'm not saying not have shura. This is different. This is about you having that feeling that you can't take any action without her approval. Approval is giving away your power to do as you, fee, as you see fit. In other words, needing the approval of women makes you a pleaser. And by the way, there's, in general psychology, there's a disease, it's called the disease to please. Some people are pleasers. This is what they do. They live their lives pleasing other people. 
rather than standing on their own feet. This is especially important for men. And the reason I'm talking about this is because the art, there was this concept in Islam, a very beautiful concept, which has been borrowed by the West in the, have you heard of the art word chivalry? Chivalry is the art of being a man, of the art of being a gentleman. Okay, in Arabic it was called marua, the books, Islamic books of etiquette, you know, how a man should behave, how a man should interact with others, uh, how you should be with your parents, how you should be with the guest, how you should be with, this was marua, how you should be with women, right? When, when the uh, gentleman comes, he takes off his hat when he sees women, you probably see this on TV at times, you know. So that marua, that chivalryness, is an Islamic tradition. But it was about being, you could say, gentle and then man. Being a man, but having gentleness, right? Being on your two feet, but being still gentle, right? That balance, where you're not between a situation where you're causing conflict in the house, but you're also not in a situation where you're just giving in to everything. And many times, guys only see these two as the options that they have, where on the one side, either they have a choice to cause chaos, or they have the choice to submit. The result of that is, you will become a type of male that is no longer respected by the wife, if you completely give in to everything. Because no woman, no wife, wants her husband to be of the type that's completely submitting to her. And when she loses that respect, then she abuses that because now she has no respect. So all that she can do now is to abuse it more and more. Just use the person to your advantage. So, let's define approval as it relates to our relationships with women. Approval is her permission for you to take an action. Approval is her acknowledgement that she won't take you to task for your choice. Maybe approval is giving away your power to do as you, fit, as you see fit. In other words, needing the approval of women makes you a pleaser. It then says, stick around for a moment and you'll learn how curing yourself of this tendency to please will actually allow you to be happier in your own skin. Be more merciful, more respected, be a better partner, more compassionate, more present, a better couple, a better example to your kids, to be more of a man she actually wants you to be. Meaning, if the husband's always giving in to the wife, what are the kids learning? What are the kids learning? This is the, you see, uh, if the house has a mother and a boyfriend, then that's what the kids are learning. Right? Or if the house has a father and a girlfriend or girlfriends. That's what the kids are learning. If the husband-wife relationship is very important because that's what the kids will learn to have expectations of. You know, and uh, I won't mention who, but uh, once a sister said to me, uh, there was a couple, husband-wife, uh, very successful uh, doctors, so on and so forth. But the, one of their daughters said to me, you know, I always thought men are clowns. She said this as she was growing up. She felt men were always clowns. Because she saw how her mother treated the father. The father. And not only that, especially in America, all the syndicated programs do this thing where the girl is always more intelligent than the boy. Like you can take the Bart Simpson show, the I Love Raymond show, Bill Cosby show. You take any syndicated program, there is... There is uh, there is a bias, you can say, not an intentional effort, I wouldn't say an intentional effort, but definitely a bias towards showing such a, such a situation. Anyhow, the point being that uh, the wife herself loses respect when the husband is not able to do things on his own. Okay, So, uh, so one side is, you're upset with what your wife is saying and you make it into what? A war zone. The other side, the other extreme is, you completely just give in to her and you just become like a yes man to uh, your wife. And what that does is it not only emasculates you in, in, in psychologically, meaning you also feel that your manhood has been snatched away from you, but then she stops respecting you, the man, because what she needs is not an emasculated man, she needs a man, a rijal, a man. And you know, by the way, this concept in Qur'an, the word rijal, how it's separate within the Qur'an from the word dhakar. Dhakar means what? Dhakar wa untha. 
Dhakar means male, right? And Rijal means male, man. But the word Rijal is used in the spiritual context, like a full man. Like for example, Arijalu qawwamuna ala nisa. Men are the real men are caretakers of women, right? Not just not dhakar. It doesn't dhakaru qawwamuna ala nisa. The male species is caretakers of women. No, because not all men can be caretakers of women. It takes a certain type of male, male to be uh, marriage material and the type of person that can take care of women. So another for example, Men who did not get distracted from the dhikr of Allah because of business or trade. Another place, Men who have been true to their promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the word rijal in Quran as it comes in the Quran has a significant, not just the meaning of being male, but being responsible, accomplished men. Uh, the art of manliness, so to say. So, so here, the, so, so, so those rijal are rijal qawwamuna ala nisa. So the men are the caretakers of women. These are men who can stand on their own feet, right? They don't necessarily, uh, so they're gentle on the one side, like we were talking about, but they're, they have these manly qualities on the other side. Okay. So, the person, the, the, the therapist, the counselor is writing, stick around for a moment and you'll learn curing, uh, how curing yourself of this tendency to please will actually allow you to be happier in your own skin, be more respectful, be more respected, be a better partner, more compassionate, more present, better example to your kids, and be more of the man that she actually wants you to be. So, uh, he goes into some uh, psychology, I'm, I'm just going to read it very quickly. It's very basic stuff. Where does this need for the approval of women come from? As with most of our emotional, psychological relationship challenges, the seeds were planted a long time ago in a galaxy seemingly far, far away your childhood. In your home with your parents, you learned more than you might have realized. You learned what a man is and how one behaves. You learned what a woman is. You learned what a marriage or relationship between two looks like etc etc you learned how to treat women you learned how to get what you feel you needed you learned how to cause chaos or how to avoid chaos how to calm the waters how to mediate your medic mediate your pain in a nutshell you learned how to be the man you are today primarily from what you saw in those early days okay what precisely did you see and learn question mark how did your father uh, Blah, blah, blah. It, this is the, one of the problems of the modern day psychology. They try to take everything to the parents. Uh, I have a big problem with that because it's just victimization. As I've talked about this in my other lectures. Uh, you know, people then can just say, well, I'm like this because my parents did this. And then, you know, it's like, what's the solution then? Uh, it, it, anyway, the point is, is that a person is in conflict, whether he saw it in his childhood or some other place or just learned it on his own or through TV. He learned that when there's a conflict, you can either cause more waves or you can try to calm the waters. What exactly is it that you do to protect yourself from her displeasure? You send up trial balloons to see if you can get a tentative approval by tentatively suggesting a tentative idea you had. Right? So, dear, I'm planning to go next week to such and such conference. What do you think? Right? So, you need, you're, you're asking for her approval. Right? You edit yourself and avoid saying or doing what you know will provoke her. You spend an inordinate amount of time and energy concerned about how she feels and how she'll react. You've been rationalizing, compromising, second-guessing, playing it safe, avoiding confrontation. As a result, you've slowly forgotten what really matters to you, what you were once passionate about, how you truly feel about issues, yourself and others. Meanwhile, if you're a dad, you're passing all this on to the next generation, your legacy. Now let's take a step back in time. When you first met her, none of this was seemingly a problem. You were in love. 
It was easy to dismiss little issues. After all, you're a master of denial. And you were, hopefully, uh, having intimate relationships, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, but then things began to change. Or was it her? You found yourself less happy, more irritable, frustrated. You agreed to see... Uh, so, you know, you, you agreed to bend the rules, I can't go to my friends, I can't go to my parents, I can't do this, I can't do that. So you gave in to all the demands your wife had to please her. But now your buddies, now everybody thinks you are uh, uh, whipped uh, or you're in the control of your wife. Uh, and, and, you know, this is, this is culturally true uh, across anywhere where there is a patriarchal um, culture where men generally dominate the women, if any particular man within that culture then is all of a sudden uh, listening to everything his wife says, then that is something uh, of a taboo within that society. And But things began to... Uh, so, so then he's talking about this. Okay, so now what are you supposed to do? And so this ayah, why is it so important? Because... Um, if you want to bring deen into the house, you cannot allow a situation where you're going to be fighting against your wife, as we discussed last time. But you also cannot allow a situation where you're giving in to all her demands. And this is why Surah al Talaq and Surah Al Tahrim are like pairs, because of the ayah, Ya yuhan nabi lima tuharrimu ma ahallallahu li ahallallahu lak. Tabtagi, tabtagi means what? Tabtagi, seeking. Mardat rida, the happiness, the satisfaction, li azwajika, for your spouse, right? You did something to make your wives happy, right? Wallahu ghafoor rahim, so Allah is most forgiving and most merciful, meaning this, by this revelation coming down, He's showing His mercy to you. Okay. So this is really the main point that I wanted to touch today and let's look at the solution. So if any brother feels, and generally as people get older they'll feel this, is that you know I've lost control of my marriage in a sense that I've given everything to her. But in giving in everything to her you weren't able to bring about an atmosphere in the house that you really wanted in the first place. So what are the ways to change that? Now, what are you supposed to do? How do you change the course of all these years? You've thought about these things many times, but you can't for the life of you imagine how anything you do can lead to a better relationship with her. Now, the two things are inevitable. If you two are in constant conflict aggressively, that's not going to help the relationship. Nor is you or even her is giving in to each other is going to lead to a situation where the relationship is healthy. Both are unhealthy relationships. Okay, so now, what are you supposed to do? You can't. For the life of you, imagine how anything you do could lead to a better relationship with her. After all, you know her and you know how she is. Things won't change. Not true. When you change, it all changes. This is his point. She will still want to be around when you made that... Will she still be a, want to be around when you made that change? Too soon to tell. But really, if you want to be happy, confident, proud, successful, if you want to feel like a man, father and husband, you really do not have much choice but to change your attitude. Okay, so let me suggest a few action items. There is there's a level of awareness you need to achieve while you take steps to change your behavior. Although the process can feel overwhelming, all I can tell you is that many men have succeeded in becoming better men starting at the same spot you find yourself in today. Okay. Take risks. So pleasers are known for their risk, uh, are not known for their risk taking. Meaning, people that like, like to please others don't generally do things without the approval of others. Okay. So if somebody has come to a point where they have learned to negotiate with life to the point where they seek the approval of their wife because that keeps the waters calm, then the number one thing to do is start taking little, little, little risks, right? Coming out of that uh, uh, situation. For some, a risk might include jumping out of an airplane. Skydiving may seem like a cakewalk to a, a pleaser compared to, let's say, letting your wife know exactly how you'd like to handle the dis 
the discipline the next time your son is disrespectful or making reservations for a restaurant you'd really like to go to and then taking care uh, and you know uh, looking for approval create a new context this is also interesting the last advice I don't like but this one I'll read uh, ever been in the presence of an extremely confident man question mark you know almost immediately when he's entered the room everybody does the energy he's putting is it can be felt it's affecting those around him. People respond subconsciously to that energy. Ask a pleaser, ask, as a pleaser, you emit your own kind of energy. Again, those around you respond to it. That's why you often don't have a voice. Now, he gives you an example. Let's say your wife asked you to pick up something from the store for dinner. You try, try as you might, you couldn't find the exact item. Uh, this actually happened to me, by the way. So you might find something close. Similar. She said, bring this bread or something, and you brought something close, because you couldn't find it. Your context, uh, so you come home and you say, you, you, might, you're, you might be saying in your mind, I hope she doesn't give me a hard time. Okay. A better context would be, dinner is going to be great, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I love you. Here, the difference, this attitude will change the way you walk into the house, the way you give her the alternative item, the way you respond to your criticism, the way you'll continue to be the man you want to be, and etc, etc. Rather than having your tail between your legs, you'll have to let it go. Instead of worrying about not pleasing her, worry, uh, put your energies on just doing the right things. Even if she's unable to let go of her disappointment, it is vital for you to maintain your context. Meaning you have to maintain your opinion, your, you have to have some confidence in yourself, so on and so forth. Ultimately, your new attitude has the potential to change how she responds to you. Depending on the state of your relationship, this could take some time, but for many, the change could take quite quickly. There are a lot of women out there who are desperately waiting for their man to show up as a man. You may be surprised to find that you're, you, etc., etc. So, and the article continues. <coughs> Uh, but I'm going to end here because I think I've made my point. My point is simply that if you're in a relationship, either if either you're fighting with her and causing ripples, that's not positive, it's not a good relationship, nor is it a positive relationship if you're always giving in. Okay? And so this is the, the basic lesson in, the, in this particular ayah. Ya ibn Nabi, O Prophet of Allah, Now this... Aya has also a fiqhi aspect. I'm not going into that, just the relationship aspect. Tabtali mardati azwajik. Wallahu lafur rahim. So Allah is most merciful and most kind. Now, what you find very interesting about this surah, towards the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because this, these two surahs, Surah Talaq, actually, even Surah Tagabun, to the ending of Surah Tagabun, then Surah Talaq and Surah Tahrim, these three surahs, they're talking about family life. Okay. And the last two ayahs of Surah uh, Tahrim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ضرب الله مثلا للذين كفروا امرأة نوح وامرأة اللوت. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example of the wives, two wives, example of two wives where the husband was pious but the wives were impious. The point is, is that you can you have to have a certain strategy. The strategy is فَحْزُرُوهُمْ Beware of them. Right? But don't cause aggression. Don't cause aggression. But at the same time, don't give in to them. But that doesn't mean that your household will change. It doesn't mean you have to divorce them if they're not going in your way. No, because Lut didn't divorce his wife. And uh, so, and, 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 uh, and uh, 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 Nuh والسلام, didn't divorce his wife because their wives were not uh, uh, coming to his, uh, his way. But the way to deal with it is in between this. You have to be firm on your two feet, be responsible, take care of your responsibilities. It's up to you if you want to keep them. It's up to you if you want to let them go. That's actually in the beginning of Surah Talaq. It's up to you to keep them, it's up to you to leave, let them go, but it's not required for you to divorce them. But you have to find this middle way.
Because if you, the, any chance you have of changing them will be in the middle way. It will not be in creating conflict, nor will it be into giving into everything that they're saying. So, ضرب الله مثلا للذين كفروا امرأة نوح وامرأة لود كانتا تحت عبدين من عبادنا. Those two, they were servants of ours amongst the servants of Allah subhanahu wa taala. عبادنا الصالحين. فخان فخانتاهما. And so they were, uh, you can say, um, uh, they were, huh? Khiana, meaning they were deceivers? No, it's not a good word, but, huh? Well, it's it's more it's precise than that. Uh, what does he say? Uh, false to their husbands. Okay, that I can buy that, yeah. Okay, false to their husbands. Uh, they were cheating. Khiana means cheating, you can say. فَلَمْ يُغْنِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَقِيلُ دُخُلُ النَّارَ مَعَ الدَّاخِلِينَ And so they were told to enter the hellfire. Ultimately, it is also about a person's destiny, right? Life is a test, marriage is a test. Sometimes you can marry somebody, do all the right things. You can even be a prophet of Allah and your wife will not come to the right way. Now, what's very important in the Qur'anic attitude is this, is that, uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَدَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِمْرَأَةِ الْفِرْعَونَ So, إِمْرَأَةِ الْفِرْعَونَ is the example of the wife is pious and the husband is, the wife is the most pious, the husband is also the most impious, okay? إِمْرَأَةِ الْفِرْعَونَ إِذْ قَالَتْ إِذْ قَالَتْ رَبِّي رَبِّبْ لِي عِنْدَ بيت إن ذاك بيتا في الجنة الله make for me by your side by you الجنة for me ونجيني من فرعون وعمالي ونجيني من قوم الظالمين and save me from the فرعون and his actions and save me from the wrongdoers and this the last example is of مريم عليه الصلاة والسلام and the point being that Whatever your situation in the end is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your qadr could be like, uh, uh, like, uh, like either Lut or it could, be like, uh, it could be like the Prophet where both husband and wife are going towards Jannah. Uh, or it could be the husband's going towards Jannah or it could be the wife is going towards Jannah. So there are limitations to what you can do uh, in, within a context of your marriage. Right? You have to decide. So now, regarding the decision, just very quickly, I just want to read this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet, Ya ayyuhal nabi, idha talaktum nisa, O Prophet of Allah, when you, have, when you divorce your women, فَطَلِّكُهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ وَحْصُلْ عِدَّةً Then divorce them for their time period and count Count it uh, well. What takullah rabbakum? So fear Allah your Rabb. Wala tukhrijun, wala tukhrijuhunna min biyudi, min biyudihinna. And do not kick them out of their houses. Meaning, up, up till the time of idda, their your house is like their house still. They can live with you even though you're divorcing them. Wala tukhrijuhunna illa an yatiina bi fahishat mubayyina. And do not kick them out of the houses unless they've come with clear indecency. وَتِلْكَ حَدُودُ اللَّهِ And this is the حدود of Allah. وَمَنْ يَتْعَدَّ حَدُودُ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ ذَلَمَ نَفْسَهُ وَلَا تَضْلِ لَعَلَّ اللَّهَ يُحْدِثَ بَعْدَكَ ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَةً Oh, the point I was trying to make here is, is this ayah. فَإِذَا بَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنَّ And when they reach their time period, meaning the عِدَّةً Time period has been reached. فَأَمْسِكُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ أَوْ فَارِقُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Either you take them back in goodness or you let them go in goodness. So this is, the choice was given to the Prophet, this is a choice given to the man, right, of the house, so to say. And these traditional values of things like, you know, see, uh, let me explain it to you this way. The modern world, the modern setup of the world, the problem is, is that they say everyone is equal. I've talked about this before. And an equal means there's no hierarchy. But the fact is any relationship has to have hierarchies. Whether it's teacher to student, employer to employee. Every relationship, human to human relationship, has a hi hierarchy. Even if it's informal, between some friends. Some friends will have a dominant personality versus the others, so on and so forth. So, in the context that human beings have, are not equal in relationships. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that He's putting the responsibility of the household, of making the family, on the men. It is the men who have to maintain. And it is, and you know, what's happening now is with this, uh, I don't want to go into this right now, but uh, I will go into great detail one day. Uh, the, the feminization of men, where men are told to, you have to find your feminine side. You ever, ever heard of this? In TV and people talk about this. You men have to find, you heard about this? You have to find your feminine side, you know. Men are told to find their feminine side. And, and things like masculine behaviors, like being aggressive, being competitive, being... These are looked at within the educational system, especially as negative qualities. And, uh, and so, the point here is, is that, uh, what is the role of men in society? Really, this is what it comes down to. What is the purpose? I had an anthropologist lady once ask me, just, just to give you an example, once an, one anthropologist lady said to me, I see no purpose of men in society. What's their purpose? They, have, they serve no purpose. They don't give children. They don't, they, don't, they don't have to provide anything. I mean, in the olden days, and you know, she's, she's a professor, so she was giving examples in the olden days, who worked in the fields, men or women? Women worked in the fields. Okay, so they're, 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 they're the ones that are working in the fields. They're the ones who are giving birth. They're the ones who are cleaning the house. They're the ones who are doing everything. What's the purpose of men? So this, this is the question. What is the purpose of men? And, and so this is an important question because when in society men are not given the position that they should have, then there's certain results. Historically speaking. So now you have a situation where women have been talking about the rights of women, rights of women, rights of women. But it's come at what cost? Because when you say, because the male, this is how the male mind works. If the male mind is told, we're equal, that is equivalent to telling the male mind, you're not responsible. You're not responsible for anything. And the result of that is, well, the children that come out, uh, the children that are born out of wedlock, the, the male, when he is no longer upholding the responsibility of family, right, then the whole society disintegrates. Because then the man falls to the level of not taking responsibility. And it's very, it, the male psyche is, the male psyche is, he will, if he takes responsibility, he'll take it very seriously. But if he's told, you have no benefit, you have no preference, you're just like anybody else, then the male psyche will not take responsibility. And that will lead to what's happening practically around us today, which is uh, men are just trying to have fun. Because then, then it's not marriage, which is the essence of marriage is responsibility. But then it becomes, instead of responsibility, just becomes having fun. It's the entertainment, because that's the... That's what it is for, uh, for, for men and for women for that matter, but that's what it becomes. It becomes a source of entertainment. And so what is the purpose of men? The purpose of men, without men, with women, you can do a lot of things. With women, you can nurture children. With women, you can do a lot of things. But you can, you create culture. This is the difference. Cu women create culture. Women create what? Culture. culture. What is culture? Culture is language. Mother teaches the child what? How to speak. speak. Culture is what? Food. Who cooks the food? The mother cooks the food. These are good food. These are bad food. This is healthy for you. This is the, this is the mothers. This is the mothers do this. Mothers are the nurturers, right? They make culture. They're the ones who decorate the house. They're the ones who make the atmosphere of the house. So the cultural aspect is, by, is done by women. This is why, I'll give you a great example of the cultural impact of things. You have two scholars, Dr. Isra Ahmed, he spent his entire life teaching Qur'an. Okay, and then you have Farad Hashmi. You know Farad Hashmi? She spends her time, she comes into the scene in the 1990s. Okay, who had a greater cultural impact? Farad Hashmi, by far. Because she... She changed inside the house. She changed things inside the house. So, Farad Hashmi has this profound uh, impact, cultural impact, 
where uh, women all of a sudden change, they become more religious, more practicing, come to the deen, get attached to the Qur'an, and then because of Farad Hashmi, you know, a lot of the Ikna sisters, they also get involved in the Qur'anic studies and all of that. So she has a great cultural impact. And Isra Ahmed, he doesn't have a cultural impact per se. But many more people are listening to him. In terms of numbers, maybe thousands more are listening to Isra Ahmed than listening to Farad Hashmi, but Farad Hashmi has an impact on the ground. And the reason is, women, women create a holistic change at a cultural level, at the level of the house itself. But what change did Isra Ahmed bring that Farad Hashmi can't? That tells you, that's what makes it. Society is really composed of two parts. One part is cultural. Women can create culture. They create language, they create culture, they create norms. They create traditions, they're the ones who talk and communicate and connect. And so the women, they do all of this. But what is it that the men do? It's, uh, you can understand it in a, uh, in, a, in a joke like this, that uh, a husband and wife got married. And uh, so they asked the next day after the marriage, who's in charge? They asked the husband, who's in charge? So uh, the husband said, of course I'm in charge. And uh, so they said, how do you know you're in charge? He said, because I decide if we're Republican or Democrat. Okay. So the point being, men, what contribution do men give to society? The contribution men give to society is an ideological contribution. They decide the direction of society. Five minutes, okay. They decide what? The direction of society. The women can glue things together in the household glue the husband and the children, everybody, they can glue the things together. But in which direction the household will go in the long term, where we want to be as a family, that is in the male psyche, even to the point, I'll give you three, I'll give you three examples in psychology of this. Women love the process, they don't love the end goal. Men care more about the end goal, not about the process. A typical example is shopping. For women, the experience of shopping is the main thing. For men, when they go into a store, they generally have an idea, generally not all the time, but generally they have an idea that either they have a specific item that they know they want to buy, or they know exactly what the section they want to look at, and then just they're done. But with women, they want to have, it's not what they want to buy, is not the goal. The goal is the experience of shopping. It's not shopping for a female, generally speaking. It's not true for all women. It's generally not shopping for women to go into a store, pick up the item she wants and leave. Even though they'll do that. Many women will do that. But that's not going to be considered a shopping huh, experience. Second example, uh, going on vacations. For men, they're always, they're always concerned with the goal, which is, we want to go to this city, in this hotel, I want to reserve, reserve these books, so on and so forth. She's more interested in the process. What's the scenery there? What's, uh, what's, uh, she's not interested in the cost and the end result. She's interested in, oh, can we go from here to our family members, you know, and from there, can we go there, can we go there, right? So she's interested in the experience of that, uh, another example is uh, uh, I forget the third example. I had three examples in my mind. But the point is, women are process oriented and men are what? Goal oriented. So that's why women are good at the process level. When it comes at a psychological level for the family to reach a certain goal, right? The father has to take the family to a certain goal which is to save yourselves and your family from the hellfire. That goal, right? The men are more interested in being goal-oriented. This is the thing. This is the, the crux. And this, there's so much research on this that I can show on men being goal-oriented versus women being process-oriented. And, and so the men have been given the responsibility, therefore, <coughs> just naturally, it seems right that such a responsibility would be given to men because they're the ones who are always constantly measuring their, where they are to what their goal is. 
Whereas women would get caught up in the experience of things, which means the women would get caught up on the day-to-day -day Islamic things. Did the kids get up for Fajr? Right? Did the kids do their homework? They're interested, women are, would be interested in the process of things. Whereas guys, men would be more likely to be interested in the end result. But how can, again, I'll end by saying this, how can men be that man? He can only be that man if he finds that balance between being extremely aggressive or being so submissive that he can't uh, even be assertive or feels like he needs his wife's opinion at all times. And so that's what, uh, this is what these two surahs uh, are, are, are referring to. Ya ayuhan nabi lima tuharrimu ma'ahad Allahu lak tabtaghi marbata azwajika wallahu ghafur rahim aqulu qawni hadha astaghfirullah li walakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimina wal-muslimat jazakum Allah khair.